Today we speak about the company that is benefit supplier of the high precision uh, components as well as subsystems. Mr. Reddy, the Managing Director at MTAR Technologies, joins us. Hi, Mr. Reddy. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, there's this big push that's being talked about. Uh, are you seeing signs of it? Is it evident on the ground? And uh, more importantly, I wanted to ask you that if this opportunity comes to you, what are the maximum peak revenue potential that uh, you can achieve with your current investments? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, see, uh, one thing is uh, the technology that is available with us. Uh, we are doing enough uh, R&D to develop and indigenize the systems and various products for government of India and the defense organizations across the board. Uh, another very important issue is uh, in order to become a defense prime uh, with the latest technologies, a lot of MNCs, uh, because of the Make in India concept, uh, have to approach the uh, companies which are capable in India to join them together uh, to have a jump start in being able to achieve this very quickly, which is also very important uh, in order to ensure that we are on track with uh, the indigenization program. So th that will be a large benefit for a lot of uh, uh, companies uh, which are uh, capable to uh, have a joint venture with uh, the leading MNCs who are already in the defense sector big time. Mr. Reddy, but if the opportunity comes to you, then what kind of peak revenue revenues can you do? You've been talking about big growth numbers. I think for this year as well, you're talking about a 25-30% or more than that growth. Uh, so at peak levels, what revenue potential uh, can you come up with? No, it's too early to comment on the numbers, but our growth numbers are not linked to this, uh, you know, uh, defense indigenization program. Uh, this is something which will be a added bonus for us, and we need to quantify the numbers. But it will be it will be huge for sure. Uh, there's no second thought about that. Uh, Mr. Reddy, uh, defense is about uh, twenty percent of your business, right? Sales. Yeah, it's less than twenty percent. It's less than twenty percent. Uh, so. Uh, just to uh, push on that point, has, uh, the, so the co uh, the focus on ind indigenization is of course there, uh, and uh, lately we picked up, but this is again not confirmed. We had the management of Musgaon Doc join us yesterday, and I asked them as well, and they said, well, they've heard of it, but they've not seen a direct circular or anything of that sort. Uh, that for emergency purchases, defense purchases, uh, the armed forces have been authorized to uh, buy equipment directly from local suppliers, not imports, up to a certain value order. Uh, I mean, do, do these kind of things, I mean, I don't know if you've uh, heard of this, uh, what, uh, is that a significant opportunity? Or for you in the space that you are in, it's largely the, uh, you know, uh, big platforms, projects which will make all the difference. Yeah, it is a significant opportunity, uh, provided if you're able to deliver it, you're able, capable of doing it. Uh, we are right, right up there in terms of the technology as well. So obviously, yes. Uh, and uh, there's going to be more and more push uh, towards Make in India concept. And uh, that's where the whole uh, difference is coming across right now. Um, sir, I wanted to talk a little bit about the clean energy business, which is 53% of your order book. I uh, want to understand how are you enhancing your own manufacturing capabilities in the clean energy space in order to meet the export needs which perhaps could go up and what is the kind of growth that you're seeing in that vertical? Uh, as I said earlier, we have already uh, planned the expansion requirements uh, for the kind of growth we're looking at for this year and as well as next year. Uh, but it is growing uh, pretty rapidly and uh, we are pl proactively planning, planning ahead of time in terms of our infrastructure and the requirements needed for that. We are uh, well ahead in terms of uh, what uh, we can achieve in terms of the technology and the implementation programs for clean energy. Can you give us uh, some numbers, sir, uh, in terms of revenues? I think at the end of FY22, you were sitting at about 200 crores by way of the clean energy vertical. What kind of sustainable growth do you see? No, as I said, overall, we said uh, 55 to 60 percent of revenue growth will have for this year, uh, uh, including all the segments, where 55 percent of that or 60 percent of that would be clean energy uh, in terms of the overall uh, numbers. OK, and a couple of more details. Then your margins for the first quarter were at around 27 percent, but you have indicated that scales up to around 30 percent. And also your working capital days, I think it was at around 250 days. Uh, where do you see that number settling? Uh, the working capital days, uh, see, uh, 
we are looking at reducing our inventory levels. We are more uh, a little bit uh, cautious about uh, the supply chain issues, the COVID-related issues. Slowly, the things are settling, settling down, but not as yet. But we are looking at less than 200 days by end of the year. And margins, obviously, will settle down at the level of 30% plus minus 100 basis points by end of the year. Which is uh, what your guidance has been at. Mr. Reddy, uh, for the clean energy business, for Bloom, uh, what, what, what are you making for them now? I mean, has the product offering itself expanded? Uh, you know, there were, there were, you wanted to scale up to making electrolyzers, etc. Could you give us some sense uh, where you are at? Yeah, we are uh, adding uh, newer products. Obviously, electrolyzers, we are doing the batch production right now. So, uh, even the, uh, uh, the products which we are doing right now, we are adding one more new product called uh, uh, the latest version of the Yuma version, that hot boxes that we are doing right now. And also a lot of assemblies, uh, key assemblies for them, uh, new products for them. And uh, we added with a new facility in Alibatla, we're also doing their enclosures and a lot of sheet metal assemblies for them right now. Mm -hmm. So we have increased our wallet share because we have been qualified for a lot of these uh, in the recent past, the last one quarter. So you've increased your wallet share with Bloom, but are you looking for customer diversification as well? Any new customers on the Anvil like Enercon or anyone else? Yes, uh, already uh, we have orders from G Renewable. Uh, we have orders from Voight, Andrix uh, in the various other clean energy segments as well. And we are in discussion with Enercon, I mean, that should get through. So we're adding a lot more customers, but please understand in fuel cell technology, the kind of volumes they need to achieve uh, and for MTAR to get involved with other customers in fuel cell, it could take time mm. because they need to come to the level of uh, bloom in terms of the numbers, what we're looking at for them to look at uh, reliable OEM to work with them. All right. So that's where we stand. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Reddy. Appreciate you joining in and uh, running us through all of that. It's good speaking with you, sir.